morning, class. Good morning, morning ma'am. Who wants to lead the prayer? Okay, Miss Alvaro, can you? So let us bow our head and let us pray. Amen. Okay, let me check your attendance. Who's absent today? Nothing, ma'am. Okay, you are perfect attendance. Before we proceed on our topic, you are going to play a game which is Gulo ko ayusin mo. I will give you five minutes to finish it. Are you ready? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, let's start. Write your answer in the paper. Mind on your paper, class. Change, of course. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, Miss Nera. For me, fashion design is a form of art dedicated to the creation of clothing and other lifestyle accessories. Thank you for your wonderful answer. Thank you, Mom. Fashion design. Fashion design. The art of applying design, aesthetics, clothing, construction, and natural beauty to clothing and its accessories. It is in influenced by culture and different trends and has varied over time and place. The fashion design is really the accessories that we use like earrings, rings, and etc. Hairdressers. Necklace. Yeah. Bracelet. Okay, what's the ring? Mercado. <laughs> the art of the application of design and aesthetic or natural beauty to clothing, clothing and, uh, and accessories. The art of the application of design and aesthetics of natural beauty to clothing and accessories. The fashion design to implement the natural beauty of the clothes and the accessories. Fashion design is influenced by cultural and social latitudes and has varied over time and place. What's to read the last? What's to read? Okay, Miss Nera. Fashion designers work in a number of ways in designing clothing and accessories. And because of the time of the garment onto the market, must at times anticipate changing the consumer taste. Thank you for your Also, what's the read? Okay, Miss Mercado. Fashion designer attempts design clothes which are functionally as well as aesthetically pleasing. <coughs> they must consider who is likely to wear a garment and the situation in which it will be worn. They they have a wide range and combination of materials to work with a wide range of colors. Patterns and styles to choose from. Though most, most clothing worn for everyday wear falls within a narrow range of conventional styles, unusual garments are usually sold for special occasion, occasions, such as evening wear or party dresses. Some clothes are made specifically for an individual, as in the case of food. Today, must, most clothing is designed for the mass market, especially casual and everyday work. Thank you, Ms. Perkano. Fashion design is created and to, to make us presentable on the example in the parties, celebrations. Any fight uh, and celebrations that we are attending. And for today, the fashion design is trending on the market through the casual, casual and everyday that we wear. Like shorts, t-shirts, that's the fashion design. Um, for now, I have here the pictures and you're going to do is identify the pictures. Write your paper and I'm going to check it later. Okay. 
Okay, let's discuss those pictures. Okay, quiet class. Listen carefully on what I discuss, okay? Yes, ma'am. Measuring tape. Who wants to read? Miss De Leon? It's a flexible tool used for mesh measuring length. It is made of the ma of materials like fiberglass, glue, plastic, metal, ribbon, or strip. So it is a kind of flexible ruler, also known as tape measure. It is a marker in centimeter and inches. I know you are familiar with that. Am I right? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Measuring tip is look like a ruler that there is a number and end. Also, the measuring tape shows marking into different units, centimeters and inches. In number one, division markings in centimeters. The measurements towards the bottom of of the given image are are in centimeters and millimeters. Ten millimeters make one centimeter, so there are ten divisions between each centimeter. Each centimeter, each small division is equi equivalent to one millimeter. When looking at the given image, the first small mark after the five six Centimeter marking denotes a measurement of 51 millimeter, which can also be referred to as 5.1 centimeter. The, you know the centimeter and the inches, right? Yes, ma'am. The centimeter is the the large number in the measuring tape. Just like this, it is the centimeter, and in this side. There's, there's a inches, which is the small amount of measures. This is the second one, the inches. Who wants to read, Ms. Mercado? The measurement towards the top of the given image are inches. The large number 1 to 3 mark next to the long marking represent full inches. Between these numbers are small divisions to represent fractions of an inch. Since 12 inches make 1 foot, there is a 1 foot marking after every 12 inches. Thank you, Ms. Mercado. Did you know how to measure using a measuring tape? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Very good. In additional, these are the steps to how to measure. Number one, place the zero mark of the tape at one end of the object. Second, roll out the tape till the other end of the object. Number three, find the closest centimeter marking and count the remaining number of millimeter markings to its right. For example, if there are three markings after 9 centimeter marking, then the measurement would be 9.3 centimeter. Number four, for measuring in inches, similarly read from the other side of the measuring tape. In sewing needle,
Who wants to read the meaning of sewing needle? Is the Leon? A long slender object with a pointed tip. The first sewing needles were made of bone or wood. Modern ones are manufactured from high carbon steel wire, nickels or gold, plated for propulsion resistance. The highest quality embroidery needles are made of platinum. Traditional needle needles have been kept in needle books or needle case which have become an object or abdomen. Sewing needle, if you can see that, and that's the picture of sewing needle. And there are, there are a handy needle, hand for needle. It has a sole at the non-pointed end of carrot thread or cord to the fabric after the pointed end versus it. Hand sewing needles have different things depending on their purpose. As you can see on the on your home, right? There are the smallest and the largest needles. Needle size is denoted by a number on the packet. The convention for sizing is that the length and thickness of a needle increases as the size number decreases. For example, a size one needle will be thicker and longer, while a size 10 will be shorter and finer. There are types of hand sewing needles. The sharps are needles used for general sewing they have a sharp point around eye and are of medium length. The difference between sharp and other sewing needles can mainly be seen in their length. Sharps, as you can see the matalas na, na needle. The second one is embroidery. Who wants to read this? Okay, Ms. Percado. Embroidery needles, also known as primo needles, are identical to sharp but have a longer eye and a easier blending of multiple embroidered threads and thicker yarns. Embroidery is for the cloth that are thick to easy, easy sewing threading. or threading. Number three, the types of sewing needles. Betweens or quilting needles are shorter, the small rounded. Handwork. It is used in our, in our, we use it at the betweens in our hand. In number four, milliners. Needles are longer than sharps, are useful for busting and flitting and are used in mill millinery work. Five, easy or self threading. Needles also, also called as collects eye. Sharps have a slot rather than an eye for the thread. The next one, the thread gutter. The, ter the term thread gutter may be used in several different ways, with the meaning usually clear from the context in which the design to cut through the thread, yarn, and similar materials. The cutter used to cut the anything that in a fashion design like cloths, um, papers that use.
racing wheel. Who wants to read? Miss Dillion, can you? A tracing wheel, also known as a pattern wheel, pounce wheel, and dirt and dirt wheel. It is such instrument with multiple teeth on a wheel attached to the handle. The teeth can be either serrated or smooth. It is used to transform marking from patterns into fabric with a with or without tracing paper. These sewing tools also make slatted perforation just marking might include plate, dark bottom holes, notches or placement lines for applique or pockets. A search on Commercial establishment using a pattern marker spin wheels yields only three wheels. Thank you, Ms. Dillion. A tracing wheel used to... Sewing machine is the most important tools in the fashion design. Without it, there's no product that, are, that we are presenting, like the clothes that I wear. We don't have it without the sewing machine. Sewing machine used to stitch fabric and other materials together with thread. Sewing machines were invented during the first industrial revolution to decrease the amount of manual sewing work performed in the clothing companies. Since the invention of the first word sewing machine, generally considered to have been the work of Englishman Thomas Sane in 1790. The sewing machine has greatly improved the efficiency and productivity of the clothing industry. Home sewing machines are designed for one person to sew individual items while using a single stitch type. The next one is scissors. Who wants to read the scissors? Mom. Okay, Ms. Percado. Scissors, an instrument used for cutting cloth, paper, and other thin material consisting of two blades laid one on top of the other and fastened in the middle so as to allow them to be opened and closed by a thumb and finger inserted through rings on the end of their handles. Thank you, Ms. Fergada. Scissors is used to cut anything that are but to pay. The next one, the ruler. It is a long, narrow plot Pieces of plastic, metal, or wood with straight ed ed edges, where centimeters or inches or both are printed. It, it is used for measuring things and for drawing straight lines. The ruler is look like also the in the measuring tape, right? Yes. But um, the measuring tape is longer than the ruler. The next one, drawing board. It is a large flat board, often fixed to a metal frame so that it looks like a disc. This, on which you place your paper when you are drawing or designing something. And the next one, the French card. Who wants to read in French card? Miss Dillion? French card. A, a flat drop pick instrument usually consistent of a sheet of clear plastic, the edges of which 
are cut into several roots like curves and in living a drops person to draw lines of varying curvature. French farm is used to to part the to part the the things that we use in the fashion design. This is the last one types of uh, tools of fashion design. Pattern nurture. Pattern nurture is a common tool used in pattern making and sewing that creates a notch in a paper pattern. Notches are used to align pattern pieces. Notches in the paper are more useful than marks on the paper as they allow the mark to be seen whether the pattern paper is face up or face down. So, I have a prepared video to watch. I'm going to watch your video presentation. We're going to watch it carefully. needs to know in order to be successful in sewing so the first one and I put this here and I was thinking maybe everyone should know this part of it but I put it just just in case because this is like the basic the first thing that you have to do if you're making a top the first thing you have to do is to know your shoulder measurement so when you, whenever you're drafting a pattern we always draft on fold so some of our measurements are usually um, done using quarter or half now the shoulder measurement is one of those measurements that you always divide by two so if you take the shoulder the length of your shoulder in my case that is 16 inches if i should take that length in order to get my shoulder measurement i'm going to divide that by two which is eight so whenever you're drafting if i should take this as an example whenever you're drafting the first thing you're going to do is start with a straight line and that straight line represents your shoulder and that's the basic that's the that's the meat of it your shoulder line so this here represents my shoulder line so on that shoulder line what goes here would be half of your measurement so mine is 18 16 rather so if I should put this here it would be 8 inches and that is just the basic 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 oh there's one more that I did not put on my paper and that is your 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 slant your shoulder slant that is another important formula that you're going to need. To get your shoulder slant, there's a standard. There's a standard that you need to know. It's a three inches, eight inches standard. So three inches would represent neck width and eight inches would represent where I want um, to drop the shoulder from. So in this case, whenever you have your three inches and your eight inches, that's standard, you go down one inch from that eight inch point and then you will slant your shoulder line. So that's one more thing that you need to know. So let from that three inch to that um, one inch, you let that line pass through the one inch point. So now when you're putting your shoulder, when you're putting your shoulder, I would put eight inches, as I said, which is here for me. So I would go ahead and draw my armhole line. And we're gonna talk about the armhole depth now. Now, if you have a broader shoulder um, than me, like 18 inches, you're just going to put um, to um, nine inches. So instead of eight, it'll be nine. So you have to come over one inch more right so that would be right there okay and if you have a sh smaller shoulder than me like 14 you know you have to go into seven so it's gonna be somewhere there so this is um, something very important that you would need to know in order to be successful in sewing that's like the basic basic one now let's talk about the armhole depth because there are some persons who said that the reason why I am not so much successful in sewing is because I the armhole gives me a lot of trouble and it's true when I'm when I was starting out sewing the armhole was the hardest thing to for me to get so in order to find say for instance there you could take the 
measurement around your arm, around this part. You could take it. But what if you have a client and you forget to take their arm depth measurement, the arm measurement? All you need to do, you need to take the bust of your client, you're going to divide it by six, and then you're going to add 1.5 inches. And I put this without sleeve because what I find is that when I use this measurement, I usually use it when I'm doing a sleeveless dress or a sleeveless top. So my bust is 42 inches. If I divide that by six, it's going to give me seven inches. If I add 1.5 inch to it, it's going to be 8.5 inches. And as I said, I usually do this without um, like sleeve. But if I'm adding a sleeve to my measurement, I would take my bust, I would divide it by six, and I would add two inches, so half inch difference. So in this case, it would be seven. Bust divided by six is seven, plus this two inches is going to be nine. So now, when you get that armhole depth from your shoulder measurement from here, you're going to put it so this is a vertical measurement so you have vertical measurements and you have horizontal measurements okay remember vertical means up and horizontal goes from east to west and vertical is north to south so your vertical measurements are those measurements that are along your body okay so this vertical measurement i would from my shoulder line it would be nine inches okay so it would be right there okay and what you're going to do you're just going to draw that straight line across ensure that you have nine inches both places because you don't want it to be crooked right so from my shoulder I have nine and then I'm going to draw this straight line right there now remember we said that the shoulder measurement minus eight you're going to just put your to get your arm hole you're just going to put that same shoulder measurement on this line and this line we call the chest line that is what we call the upper chest line the chest line so I'm going to put that eight, eight right here also and then I'm going to connect that to the one inch point right there. You could take it all the way up, but that would be off. So I start from here where the slope is. And then all you have to do for the front, for the front, so this is like the basic, basic now. For the front, you're going to divide what you have from the slope to where the chest line is at minus four. And remember that for the front, the front armhole is deeper. You go in three quarters of an inch, all right? And then all you have to do is connect this line, this slope here, to that three quarters of an inch. Now you're going to use you're going to use your armhole curve. I don't have mine. And then you're going to carry all the way to this point. So that will give you your um, front. And for the back, all you have to do is from this point, the off, you go around and you connect. Okay. Now it is advisable that you use a, a an armhole curve. Okay. I don't have mine. Mine is somewhere. So this would be how you get your armhole depth okay let's move on now to your bus span measurement so you hear everybody talking about you need your bus span measurement you need your bus span measurement but what is your bus span measurement your bus span measurement is your nipple to your nipple measurement so you put your tape measure on your nipple point and then you measure to the other nipple point now there's a formula or more than one formulas rather that you could use to find your bus span measurement now i want you to stay with me so for instance you could take your bust, you divide it by four, and you subtract two inches from that. So my bust is 42. When I divide 42 by four, I'm going to get 10.5 inches. If I subtract two from that, it's gonna give me 8.5 inches. So it means then that the distance from my nipple to nipple would be 8.5 inches, which is actually right, okay? But when you're drafting on your fabric, remember that this is on fold, remember. So for instance, this would be my waist measurement. Let me say this is my waist measurement. Bring it down some more. So this is my waist measurement. You're going to put that 8.5 on your waist, but remember that this is unfold. So you have to divide that by two, okay? You're gonna divide this by two, which is gonna be 4.25. So from the folded edge now, from the folded edge now, you're going to put your 4.25, which is here. And so let me just put my bust point here. So this will be my bust point. So you're gonna put the same thing on your bust point. So this here will become your nipple to nipple me measurement, okay? So, but there's another way in which you could get it. There's another way in which you could get it. So instead of dividing your bust by two and, multi and subtracting two from it, you could take your bust, you divide it by eight, and you subtract one. So my bust is, is 42. If I divide that by eight, it's gonna be 5.25. If I subtract one from it, it's gonna be 4.25. So you see that it works out just the same. Also, if you need some other convincing, <laughs> you take your bust, you divide it by 10, 
So my bust is 42. If I divide it by the 10, I'm going to buy 4.2. And I rounded it to 4.25. So any of these measurements you could use to get your bust pan. And you notice that this bodice is actually looking like something familiar, right? So now another thing that I want to talk about is the cap height measurement. And boy, this one rocked me really, really good. When I was learning to sew, this one was really difficult for me. What is a cap height? So the cap's height is the part of the sleeve that you put into this part of the bodice that goes in, that matches with this part of the bodice. This now is my, my sleeve, okay? The cap's height would be where you want the upper part of the bodice to actually fit into this part of your garment. So in order to do that, you divide your bust by 12 and add half an inch to it. Sometimes you could add one inch, it depends. You have to work things out and see what works for you. Half an inch works for me, but if you feel like it's too um, tight, you could add one inch. So for instance, so my bust divided by 12 is 3.5. If I add half an inch, it's gonna give me four inches. So to do your caps height now, you're gonna from the edge of your paper or your starting point, remember you always start with a starting point. You're going to add your four inches and this part, this part, my friends, of it, the upper part would be your cap side. So what you're, you have to do is that at, on this cap side, you're going to put your the half of your bust measurement. In this case, it was nine inches. So you're gonna put that nine inches. So let me assume that that's my nine inches. And if you had added any ease to this measurement, say for instance, I usually use half an inch, you have to add it back to this point, okay? So if I had it half an inch, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw this line all the way up. So you see that sleeve coming up? You're gonna find the midpoint, six, so. And then you're just going to go up from this point, half an inch, and you're gonna curve, okay? Curve. I don't have my ruler. It's good to use a ruler, okay? Um, your curved ruler. So that here would be, this would be your added seam allowance to join it. And then for the front, it would be, this is just a rough sketch because we are just, I'm just showing you the formula. So this here would be the part that goes in to this bodice right here. I hope you understand that. Now let's talk about the bust radius. What is your bust radius? So let's talk about vertical measurements now. When we talk about the bust radius, let's talk about the vertical, vertical measurements now. So if I should take my pattern here that we've been working with, this would be the bust point line. This is where your bust from your neck to your, your, your shoulder to your bust point. This is my waist. Now there's another um, important measurement, which is your underbust measurement, okay? This is your underbust measurement. And this is, comes in very handy. Now, when you hear people talk about bust radius, especially when it comes onto a corset or it comes onto a, like a bust ear, it's very important. Now, in order to get your bust measurement, you just have to take your underbust measurement, your vertical measurements now, from the, 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 the um, bust point. So in this case, my underbust would be 14, and a half inches minus the bust point is 11 inches so from here to here is 11 from here to here is 14 and a half when you subtract that you'll get three and a half inches that would be your bust radius so it's the distance from here to there that would be the bust radius now let's talk about like a shorts or a pants or a palazzo let's talk about crotch depth you know when you're making a pants it's usually advisable that you sit on a hard surface when you sit on a hard surface you take the measurement from your waist to that surface that you sit on now what if you are making something for a client and you did not take that measurement there's a formula that you could use in order to help you or guide you to getting that um crotch depth so all you have to do is take your client's hip minus 44 and you divide it by four you're going to get 11 inches now i like my pants at my waist <laughs> i don't know but there are some ladies who wear their pants a little bit lower okay if you want your pants at your waist meaning your natural waist you could use your hip and divide it by four and you're gonna get 11. But if you want it to be a little bit lower, you know, lower fitted, because you know, I don't like wearing my pants like that. I sit and everything is showing at the back. But there are persons who like their pants lower. So all you have to do is take a hip, divide it by four and subtract one inch from that, which is 44 divided by four minus one is 10. Now let's talk about the crotch extension. So when you talk about the crotch extension, if I should have a pants, right? So this is my, this is my pants. There's something that they call the crotch extension. This little part right here, I'm not a very good artist, but there's a part here that you have to um, extend in order for the crotch to feel, um, have some freedom there. To get that crotch extension, all you have to do is divide your hip by 20, which is 44 divided by 20 is 2.2. So you know that you're going to extend 
the crotch by 2.2 inches okay now let's talk about circles i think this is also a very important topic that we need to discuss circles because circles are everywhere in sewing everywhere in sewing now to find not the circumference but radius because your circumference is whatever you're working with so for instance if i'm working with a, 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 a skirt my circumference would be my waist if i'm doing a bell sleeve my circumference would be my arm so your circumference dep depends on where on your body you need the flare to sit so in this case let's think about think of it as if it's our waist so let's use um, a waist of 44 for instance now when i teach my students in school i teach high schoolers i teach um children who the high school in the high schools and sometimes as teachers because i teach math and if sometimes as teachers you teach your children and you just give them a formula and just tell them okay students just put this formula in the calculator or put the numbers in the formula and you get the answer and then you think how did i arrive at the formula so now you have to teach some form of conceptual understanding and some of you will might, might say that oh i don't have to learn to do circles because i could go to buy is it by hand london that does the calculations for you i could go to my hand london put my waist in and they give me the formula but what can you see about the video it is all about how to measure the clothes that's correct so class you're going to answer this just the letter of the best answer write that your write your answer on your paper Yes, yes, um, let's check. Number one. How many centimeters are there in two inches? A. That's correct. Number two. The dressmaker needs to buy 100 inches length of fabric that costs 15 pesos per centimeter. B. How much is the cost of the fabric? B. B ma. Okay, correct. 3,810. Number three, what is the term of the amount paid of charge for something that acquired? Letter A ma'am, cost. Cost. Correct. Four, which one is an electronic device used for speed competition? B, calculator. Correct. Number five, which one is the term for a change of figures like changing from centimeters to inches and vice versa. Mm -hmm. C. Con con conversion. Conversion. Correct. Number six. How much the cost of one table napkin? Nine times nine is the what? Five pesos per inch. Letter B, ma. Ninety pesos. I know. Letter A. Letter A. 45 pesos. That's correct. Number 7. How many centimeters are there in 1 inch? Letter B, ma. 2.54. Very good. Number 8. There are how many centimeters in 1 meter? 100 centimeters. Very good. Number 9. An organizer measuring 12 times 30 with three patch packets design needs one half yard of a kacha cloth. If the kacha cloth is 70 pesos per yard, how much you will spend for one organizer? Letter B, 35 pesos. Very good. Number 10, how many yards are there in 4.572? Two meters it's five yards okay that's correct okay for now you're going to do is find and identify this picture write your answer in the paper And then 
letter A, the girl is picking up her clothes that she wore in her party or like that. And this is in the B, the boy is all picking up. Okay. Okay, pass your paper. Evaluation. These are the qualities of fashion designs. Write the answer in the space provided before each number. What you're going to do is write the answer on your paper. I give you five minutes to answer. Next month. Are you finished? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma Pass your paper. Yeah. And for your assignment, Make an output about fashion design that uses the different tools of fashion design. Be artistic on your work. Take picture this assignment. Okay, class, that's all for now. Goodbye, class. Goodbye, ma'am. See you tomorrow.